Welcome back to Downstairs and Dragons, where we play D&D in our basement as per tradition. Of course, you can play wherever you want with whoever you want, but we're playing episode 45 of Lost and Finders. So let's get back to the dungeon. We have Dieter playing Kieran, we have Josh playing Ixeldor, and we have Adler playing Phlebotomus. You guys jumped into a tunnel, and now you're going down through a bunch of cut lime that was dug out sometime after the spell plague, until eventually you reach another bronze Door. Well, that's your department. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and check for traps first thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's perception. That's gonna be a five. Uh, this does not appear to be trapped. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pick that lock. Or is it locked? No. I'm gonna go ahead and open that door. Okay. You open the door into a room. Um, you guys are going to be at the top of this room, and I want you to realize that I'm describing this room as if you were coming from the front of it, okay. but the but you're actually coming in through like the side door, like a back door. Ooh. So you guys are coming in through the door to the top. The massive bronze door opens into this grand chamber. The place is filled with rubble and life-size statuary. Much of it is broken. Standing in the ranks is an army of clay statues, in what must have been a once impressive array. Now half of them are fallen and crumbled, and near the door are spear wielders, perhaps twenty of them, outfitted in only scraps of leather now. At their feet lay obsidian um, and different rusted metal spearheads and bits of rotten wooden shafts. Behind these figures are archers in scattered formation. Few of them remain standing, and their arrows are gone, but they hold laminated bows, dried and worm-eaten. Farther into the room are figures of warriors with war clubs and hand axes, swords and scimitars, wearing scraps of lacquered leather, sandals, and caps. Beyond all this in the left end of the chamber are groups of statues that must have been an honored guard. These warriors wear... Um, feathered and leaven robes and headdresses and are armed with pitted bronze spears let's see which seem to be what's left of the armory each of these figures wears a breastplate of leaf they are standing near a domed structure and the dome appears to have no openings and the dome is over to the left on that wall oh yeah, yeah okay so on that platform on the left, there appear to be two stone carved columns flanking the remains of the sedan. And what is a sedan? Is it like a cart, like a carrier? It's thing? like those things that like you sit in and people carry it. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what that's I a thought. Sedan, yeah. Okay. And then in the litter of statues of attendants stand it stands nearby the sedan. Okay, so I'm thinking. Ixeldor and Kieran, if you, one of you takes the front end of the sedan and the other takes the back end, I can climb on and you can cart me around. <laughs> is that uh, what you're thinking? That's sort of what's in my brain right now. Mm -hmm. What are you guys thinking about? Not that. Okay. I was thinking about opening it up. Opening it up. I see these, um, these clay dudes are making me a little wary. We've already seen a construct here, and if these guys come alive to shoot arrows at us and stab us... Which we know for a fact they can probably do. Right. Not with these shitty weapons. Look at it. I mean, there's quite a lot of them, though. They're not an army. They're made of clay. When clay's tough, have you ever been a, had a clay pot thrown at you? I have. <laughs> Was it no, your I remember. Answer? I remember uh, the House of Pots. Yeah, where do you think I got the pot thrown at me? <laughs> uh, can I roll nature to identify the material the statues are made of? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's going to be a 10. Okay. Um, the statues are made out of many different materials. They're either made out of fine marble or fine granite. Um, each one is different and each one is one solid piece that was carved probably by an expert in their field. Oh. Uh, there's a lot of care put into them. I, I don't think that they're actual soldiers. They're probably just decorative. I mean, there's an easy way to find out. Let's search among everything and 
see if we can find out uh, if there's any any of them that stand out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna check out the sedan. Okay. Roll investigation. Fourteen. Okay. Um, the sedan, while it's beautiful on the outside, on the inside actually looks quite crude. Can you get rid of that? Mm-hmm. Um, it's almost like this was meant not to to house someone important. It's meant to carry a prisoner. It has different rungs that are meant for chains to be tied to, and you see the remnants of old rusted handcuffs. What you got over there? I'm seeing handcuffs. This is like a prisoner. A prison sedan. Or somebody was having a kinky time. It's not a king sedan. <laughs> is it a king size? Maybe it's a queen size sedan. Hmm. A jester size sedan, perhaps? What about uh, symbols? Markings? Writing? Should I roll history to see if I can identify anything on it? Yes, and Ixeldor, you can roll religion to do the same thing. I mean, 18 on history. Um, 23 in religion. Okay, you've seen the star symbol um, in the big vault that you guys were in. It's a single big star that you see on all sides of it. And religion, I'm going to let you guess what this is dedicated to. Quran. This is a sedan meant for capturing the prisoners that would be sacrificed to Korra. Oh, it's a... Uh, I mean. And with the placement of the sedan, it seems like this is the location of the sacrifices that would be made. Or, you think it's a possible location where the, the sacrifices could be made? Other possibility is this is an armory and the sedan is just being kept here momentarily. And a nice way to do the sedan, but I can't figure it out. So, Ixeldor, here. Mm-hmm. you like me, right? Do like for a given definition of like. Yeah, I suppose. So you would not human sacrifice me, right? Correct. Okay, that makes me feel better. I would may gnome sacrifice you, but I would not human sacrifice you. Haha, <laughs> 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 another joke. No, oh, thank goodness. It's goodness. getting better at it. Who would you sacrifice here? Have you done... Not human sacrifice. Living creature sacrifice? Like sentient creature sacrifice. Mm-hmm. Of what? Orc Durgar. Yeah. Yeah. I guess killing those Durgar when we were fighting them, was that sacrificing technically? That was more vengeance. Okay. So that they would I would consider sacrificing them. Okay. What's the difference between sacrificing something and just killing it with a pole axe? Like do you have to have it tied down? Well, sacrifice is usually tied to some sort of ritual. Okay. Or it's made to appease a god or Whatever it is that you're sacrificing something to, a d- devil, demon. So if we find anything that's still like living down here and it's evil, can we sacrifice it to your god? Because I think that would be pretty gnarly. Um, if if the situation is appropriate for such a sacrifice. Yay. I may not be a superstitious man, but I like seeing fun. I am a sacrifices. little. I'm a little stitious. <laughs> <laughs> you got it before I did. I'm minor stitious. <laughs> All right. So you guys are investigating the sedan. And you hear the door that you came through shut. Oh, is this the door we're supposed to lock? Oh, well, I'll just go open it again. Um, As you walk over there, you hear a whisper (laughs) over your shoulder. Is it a familiar voice? It's the one you guys heard in the room. Someone have a bad cough. Oh, uh, no, that You need a cough drop. And I don't have a Ricola. Roll initiative. Oh, boy. Ooh. Okay. 
Who got above a 20? Natural 20. Ooh. Okay. Um, there it is. Natural 20. Who got above a 15? I got a 19. Roll again. Uh, what did you get, Kieran? Ten. Okay. Okay, let's get the map up, and you guys were all by the sedan except for Kieran. Camera. Map. Hold on. This is a really big room. That's better. Okay. So, the person who gets to go first after hearing that voice is Ixeldor. Um, you were over here, Phlebotomus was hanging out over here, and Kieran was walking forward to the door. But I'm not done placing people. So, Ixeldor, what would you do if you heard a voice and couldn't see who it was coming from? Can I try to identify a direction where it was coming from? Yeah, just past Kieran. Um, possibly around here. Okay, I'll move in that direction. Okay, you're gonna head that way. 10, 20, 30? Yeah, that's as far as I can go. And then with my bonus action, I will cast Branding Smite. Oh, what does that do? What does that look like? Um, I'll give you the description. The next time I hit a creature with a weapon attack, before it ends... The weapon gleams with astral radiance. The attack deals an extra 2d6 radiant damage. Ooh. And the target, which becomes visible if it is invisible. Oh. And the target sheds dim light in a 5 foot radius and cannot become invisible until the spell ends. Okay, I've run out of statues. That's as far as I can go. Um, okay. Just the next time I hit a creature, it cannot become invisible. Freaking awesome. Okay. It was bothering me that it wasn't straight. Ugh, no, it's not straight again. Okay. Anyway, perfect. Anything else that you'd like to do with your turn? That is all I can do. Okay. Um, I will hold an attack because I just used my bonus action. I will hold an attack in case something tries to attack me or Kieran, in which case I will try to attack in its general direction. Okay. Okay, sounds good. Um, sounds fantastic. You're holding an action, Ixeldor. Let's see if you turn. Okay. Coming from this direction, you see form in the air, like a cold breath. <sighs> Please roll a dex save. And you and I add four. Okay. Do I have to roll a dex as well? You're not there. You are not there. Oh, I need a player's handbook. That is not a player's handbook. I have a player's handbook. Where the heck is our player's handbook? Oh, 18. I also got an 18. Oh, I have mine right here. Oh, it's right here. Okay. Um, that is probably going to succeed as you guys are completely encased in a cold wind all around you that bites at your skin. You're able to keep your eyes open and push forward, but... Cone. Oh. Cold. This is going to hurt. Not as much, thankfully. <laughs> Sorry, I have to grab one of the eights. Yeah, you should be sorry. I'm not. Jeez. Okay, um, counting. Uh, let's Has it been ten minutes since the fight with the... Uh, yes. Oh, shit. Is the spider still with us? It's probably not even in the room with us. It's not. Okay, makes sense. Um. Uh, so half of twenty-eight points of cold damage. Fourteen. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. You're supposed to be a Constitution save, but I'm the one who made the mistake, so it doesn't matter. My um, Constitution is better anyway. So. Okay. So that is an action. Let's see what else I've got. And then. You think you hear the quiet footsteps of it moving somewhere else. 
Oh wait, no, but it's not greater invisibility, so it becomes visible. So as the cold dissipates, you see a monster standing in front of you. Fuck, what room was this monster in? He was in 37, I think. No. <laughs> Hold on, I have to see what room, because he was, he moved, because you guys moved. Anyway, I'll get a picture up of him in a second. Um. Anyway, after his turn is... Where is he? Oh, sorry. Huh, I'm managing too many things. <laughs> Probably, like right here. Um, Not within 10 feet of me? Correct. Would you like to use the orange? It's, it's a little bigger. Yeah. Shows up in the camera a little better. Honk. But he is blue skin. Um, wait a minute. What? Oh, wait, no. Never mind. Sorry. What? No, nope. he's within 10 feet of you. No, he's not. 5, 10. 5, oh. 10. Which would trigger my held action. Hold on. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. I'm 35. 27. Hits. I think I forgot to get his picture up. Oh. I can't find oh, it. Oh, very good. Mm -hmm. Let me know when you're ready. Go ahead. 16 slashing. 5 acid. 10 radiant. What is that total? 31. I did forget to put this picture up. Okay. So what appears is this blue monster cloaked um, in radial clothing. White hair stringing down over his face and bright eyes and sharp pointy teeth glaring at you. And you slash all across his front as he appears. And he spits up blood from the from the damage and just... And now he's glowing. The Oni wants to have some fun. Anything else on your turn? Oh wait, no, that was his turn. He just appeared. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then... Sorry. Okay. Never mind. That's it. That's all I'm gonna do. Now it goes to Phlebotomus. So the Oni is visible now, correct? Yes. I am going to use one shard on my wand of magic missile. That's going to create three darts of 1d4, I believe. Yes, that is correct. force damage to the Oni. Can you describe that for me? Right. So I just wave my wand around like I'm Harry Potter, <laughs> shoot a big three glowing darts that <laughs> and slam into him? They slam right into his chest. Okay, how much damage is that again? Oh, God. Nine? Ten. 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 Okay. So the light pounds into this thing and just seems to give off a sickening glow as the shadows bounce behind him. And he doesn't seem to flinch at the at the pain. Okay. Next? Um, yeah, Blood Junior is going to spit at this fucker. Does a 10 hit? No. Does not. This one, this time it's able to move its shoulder, and the acid f goes past it onto the next um, statue, and as it eats away at what's remaining on the statue. Mm -hmm. okay. It looks over at you from a distance, and it's biting its own lips, causing more blood to gush out of its mouth. Yeah. Anything else with your turn? I'm gonna have Blood Junior fly out into range of that horrible monster. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. That's as far as you can go at 30 feet, right? Okay, that's fine. That's a good spot for him. All right, Kieran, it is your turn. All right, well... He's the right army, isn't he? Yeah. I'm going to cast... Levitate. <laughs> I'll raise up my staff and make a big circle and point right at him. Okay. All the bees come out of the staff where they were hiding and swarm on him and try and land on him. Okay. <laughs> He's going to need to make 
a constitution saving throw. Fuck. Eight. Oh, he fails and is now floating helplessly. He lifts into the air and seems to be spinning. Um, go ahead. Uh, what's next? Um... That's that's all I'm gonna do. Uh, I'll, I'll, well, he's floating up, so I will move underneath him and onto the opposite side. How far up is he? I I think I'm just gonna float him up, fifteen feet, so I can get underneath him and then down, and then I'll, I'll continue on. Oh, this way. I right there. That's how I'll be. Okay. And then I'll float him down so he's five feet above the ground. Okay. Anything else? That'll do it. Um, oh, at the start of his turn, because I always forget this, he takes seven points of B damage. You should have remembered that earlier. I know, I know. My memory is not so good. Okay. Axeldor, it is your turn. Um, I will move underneath him and just start hacking away at him. Okay, roll to hit. As you see the spinning giant above you. And you're able to catch it different oh, ways as they a, pass by. That's a natural one. Oof. I don't get advantage, do I? Yeah. Yep. We're flanking. But it's above. But it's so above. No. It's like only five feet. Oh, Alright, alright. Um, well, um. I guess it's not really a restraint. You just can't move around. Correct. Mm. That's fine. All right. More than one attack. Um, the miss was just a 12, so. Okay. Right. Um, so it was my second attack. Yep. Use a different die. There's a 17 to hit. Mm-hmm. Um, that is 10 slashing and 4 acid. Okay. And then with my third attack, there's a 28. Yeah. Holy crap. And we'll take... 10 points of bludgeoning damage. Can you describe what you're doing? Um, I'm, I move up from underneath him, take the halberd and pierce it upward, um, right in his back, and then I'll flip it around and batter him in the ribs with the butt end of the halberd. Causing him to spin mm-hmm. even more. And you guys do see the blood of the Oni blackened on the ground, almost like it's drying so quickly. And then I'll just move around five feet to his other side. Right there. And that's it. Okay. Now it's his turn. So start of his turn, he takes seven points of damage as the bees stab all around him le- while he's levitating. That's right. Um, and then you see as some of the wounds are actually filling in around him. Okay. You see him look at you touch his body and the body almost seems to become just like the swarm of bees it's a bunch of black dots and spectacles in the air as he changes into a gaseous form no longer affected by your levitate Ooh. moves 10 feet in this direction that will provoke an attack of opportunity if can I you attack it. the gaseous form i don't know the magic weapon with that He's still under under my spell, but Is it? like when he comes to, I'll just float him up again. Yeah. Um. The target's only method of movement is flying ten feet. Target can enter and occupy space for another creature. Has re- can pass through small holes, narrow openings, even cracks. Um, while in this form, the target can't talk or manipulate objects. Any objects it was holding can't be dropped, used, or otherwise interacted with. Um, okay, so he takes his glaive, he throws it, sh- hits himself, changes and floats in that direction. Um, it doesn't say anything about how to attack him like this. I'm not sure you can. It doesn't say I can't. I'm looking at the spell gaseous form, and um, it says they're resistant to non-magical damage. Right. Oh. So, but it also doesn't list an AC of any kind? Or so like, his AC stays the same. Okay, I guess so. Go ahead. Dirty 20. Yeah, okay, you hit the cloud of mist. 
And it is magical. Yeah. Uh, it's 12 slashing damage okay. and 5 acid. You slash to the cloud, making it disperse and then come back um, as it gets out of your reach. Okay. Okay. Um, that is the end of... Oh, it says at will. <laughs> There's something else at will. It's, it's something else. Um, but that doesn't change whether it's an action or a bonus action. That just changes if it costs spell slots. Correct. Um. Okay. That is all. Um. Now it is Philodemus's turn, I believe it is. I'm gonna go ahead and take another pot shot at its um at the gaseous form with one charge of magic missile. Okay. Oh, that's not bad. That's gonna be. 13 points of force damage. Okay. Anything else? Blood Jr. is gonna do his dirty. And does that count as magical damage? Yeah. Okay. Good. Not that it matters because he rolled a three. <laughs> <laughs> the acid goes past the mist orb, just lands on more statues in the distance. <laughs> the mist just parts and lets the booger fly through. <laughs> I'm going to let Blood Jr. fly closer to the mist form, but not right up to him. Sort of like, yeah. Okay. Right around there is good. Next, we have Kieran. Uh, well, I'm sitting here seeing that you slashed it. And I was like, oh, I could have done that. Uh, I'll take a pot shot at it and cast uh, uh, Infestation. Okay. What do I do? Uh, oh, great. Um, constitution... Oh, be careful. He has advantage on those. Constitution saving throw on the mist. I just realized I needed to do a couple things. Okay. Constitution saving throw. Fifteen? Uh, that is the DC. Okay. Um, the bees just fly through the gaseous form, not able to find something to sting, acting confused. Spiraling around. Anything else? That's it. Okay. I'm good here. Um. I yeah. That's that's, that's okay. it. Okay. Um. Now it is your turn, Mister Lord. Um. I'll move over to it and attack it again. You can reach it from here. I'm just gonna attack it again. Because it seems like my attacks are hitting, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. Fourteen. Does not hit. Okay. Second attack. Waves through the air. Go ahead. Eighteen. Does hit. You can see the searing that you're cutting through the mist as acid seems to hold on to something. Um, it's eleven slashing. And six acid. Okay. And then my final attack is an 18. Hits. Not great. Um, seven points of magical bludgeoning damage. Okay. All right, so you're able to beat up this gaseous form. Um, you can see it's being hit and moved by your strikes, mm. but... Is that the end of your turn? Yes. You see the body start to form out of the mist again. And as it comes out, you see a poof of darkness. 60 feet radius of magical darkness fills the area. None of you are able to see through it. Yeah. And then, while still levitating, can it move at all? No. Not if it's solid. What if he uses his glaive? He dropped his glaive. I know, but can he reach it? No, okay. Could he kick off a statue or something? Yeah, I see he kicked off a statue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't yeah. go very far. <laughs> He'd go in one direction. Okay. Um, well, either way, you can't see where he is. I that is the end of his turn. I can still feel that I control the magic. Uh, not necessarily. It doesn't pinpoint exactly no, where he is. No, I just know that my spell is still active. Correct. That's 
sorry. Uh, next is Phlebotomist's turn. I'm gonna move 30 feet close to his maximum position. Okay. I'm gonna have the Lead Junior move as far as he can do. A little you bit move. farther to the close to me. Oh, closer to you? Yeah. No, closer to me personally. Like right here. Like yeah. right there, yeah. Oh. Okay, next. Um, let just double check if I have any spells I can do while he is invisible, because I don't think magic uh, missile occurs I can't see him. He is still glowing. But it's magical darkness, you wouldn't be able to see the glow through the can in magical light. Oh, is that what the spell says? Yes. Shut uh, up! Darkness, darkness does not disilluminate magical light. Holy fuck! That's but stupid. it's only a five foot radius around the Oni, so if he's outside, if I'm outside of that five You're foot radius, I can't of see it. him. You're all outside of it. Oh. Okay. But if I move within it, I can't see him. Mm-hmm. Does Blood Junior see the no. Oni? <laughs> There's some spells. Um... Damn, that wouldn't really work anyways. I'm gonna start moving some statues. Um... Do I have the line of sight on that area? Or no? Through a statue. But it's yeah. pitch black, so you don't have line of sight. But if he was to appear somewhere in that area. Um, like if there was light, yeah. there would be a statue in your way. Okay. Well, how short you are, not really. Okay. Um, I'm going to use the dash action to move again. Just closer to where the action's at. Uh, how does it work when you dash in the darkness? Do you run into stuff? I'm not running into the darkness, am I? Is the whole area dark? Yeah. Okay. It's 60 foot radius, so it's like huge. Okay, that's fine. I feel like you'd have to go at half speed because you're walking without being able to see where you're going. To be safe. I'd say that's fair. Did he cast a darkness spell or is this a main ability? Both. Okay. Because the darkness spell is only 15 foot radius. Oh, might just say 60 foot darkness in the only snap block. Darkness? Oh, range is 60 feet. Yes. But it's both. Well, range isn't the Hold same on, I'm as reading. Radius, I know, right? I know, I'm reading it. Okay, if it's yeah. like a Nate spell casting, he can cast. I know! It. Oh my god, stop mansplaining to me! <laughs> 15 feet then, so you're right on the edge of the darkness, Solotomus. I'm gonna charge the darkness. And then you run into Ixeldor's back. <laughs> Oof! I'm not the only, don't kill me. Okay. Um. Well, bottom is anything else you'd like to do? I think that's all I'm going to be able to do on my turn here. Okay, curing it is your turn. Hmm. 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 I'm going to maneuver around till I'm over here. There you go. You're on... You're in the darkness here. What, what about right there? There, you're outside of it. And right here? You can't go that far. Oh. Can I see around the darkness? You can see Blood Jr. over there, and you can see where you came from. All right, and then I will take the dodge action. Okay. Ixidor, it's your turn. I'm going to move in that direction. In the direction that I last saw the Oni. There's a statue in your way. I'll move around the statue. Now you can see the Oni. Okay, I will attack him. Okay, roll the hit. Eighteen. Hits. Eleven slashing and six acid. Okay. I will attack him again. Okay. Nineteen to hit. Hits. Fourteen slashing and three acid. Okay. And then my third attack is also a nineteen. Alright. And it will be 10 bludgeoning. Okay. Okay. Um, this monster does have death saves. So you can still do how do you want to do this, but don't cut off his head or anything. <laughs> so how do you want to do this? You do it however you want. Um, so you're seeing this spinning, glowing object, and you're just bashing the ends of every appendage trying to find the head. You're slashing and cutting and getting it to spin around, and finally with that last bludgeoning hit, you're able to strike the skull, and the thing seems to fall limp, and the darkness dissipates, leaving a floating 
blue only. Oh, there he is. Well, we want to capture this one. I don't think we can do it. It turns into bloody mist. I'm not a fan of putting him in my hat, I gotta say. Hmm. Let's just end it. Cut off its head like we did with the statue. Yeah, if I do it. Well, it's still floating. I mean, I can control how it floats. Yeah, I mean, do we want to tie it up and question it? I don't really want to do that. Natural 20, it wakes up. <laughs> After Ixeldor's turn is its turn. <laughs> it has one hit point. I can't move. They can see you, Ixeldor. Please roll a something, something, something. Um, what the hell? Oh, you don't roll anything. <sighs> How much health do you currently have? 40 HP. Is it sleep? Mm -hmm. I cannot be magically put to sleep because I am an elf. It doesn't know that. <laughs> Shut your filthy fucking mouth. How about a full botanist might be able to go to sleep? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, full botanist is in range. Yeah. Where the fuck is my RDA? Okay. Ah. Um. Twenty-eight points. How many do you have left? Oh um, God. Uh, Thirty-two. Fuck. Thirty-two. Fuck. None yes. of you fall asleep. You just feel the drowsiness hit all of you as one last attempt. But now, Flabotomus, it is your turn. Okay. I'm gonna have Blood Junior spit at this guy. He's closer. Okay. It's a fifteen hit. No. Okay. Yes, it goes flying over and hits another statue. Okay, well, you know, if that's the case, I'm gonna use my magic missile. Gonna try to hit him in the head with one last blow? Yeah, I'm okay. gonna hit him in the head, and the force is gonna have him spinning all around really fast. Okay, well, um, well, damage? Not like the damage. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, you're just, it's gonna... Eleven. Knocks the creature out. Um, what are you guys going to do? Do we want to harvest anything off of it? Let's take its organs. Or its teeth. Do we want to just kill it? I'm gonna hack it to pieces. Or its skin. I got a natural 20, it won't up. Yeah, don't I get a turn first? <laughs> you guys... <sighs> he, he did declare his action. He did, but it was after you guys said enough words to take two rounds. These two are talking. I didn't roll a hit! <laughs> 20 fucking four. Hit. Okay. So well, right as his eyes start to blink open, okay. you slash at him. That's two <laughs> death saves failed. Yeah, that's enough. And you slit the yeah. throat and blood drips all over, still levitating and floating around and spraying all of you as it spits <laughs> out at all of you. Oh, that's horrible. It's like a blood caravel. <laughs> this guy pissed me off, so I'm glad we got rid of him. It was, I'm uh, going to take my stick and I'm going to twirl him around. Spinning him around faster. It's spitting black blood all over um, your guys' armor Please stop and hair. doing that. I'm going to see how fast I can get him to spin. I'm going to stop it. I'm 20 feet away. <laughs> stop doing that. So is that an opposed strength check? <laughs> yes. All right. I'm going to it. float him 15 feet higher. It's out of full bottom of his reach. Yes. You lose. <laughs> I got a four. <laughs> 18. What do you guys want to do next? I'm gonna try and harvest its organs and blood and all. Oh, right, let's rifle to its pockets. Roll survival. I'm gonna go survival. pick up the glaive it had. That's wisdom. Uh, it does have a cursed glaive. Uh, I say cursed as in desecrated. Sorry, I meant desecrated. Let's let's not touch Roll strange survival. weapons. <laughs> um, that is gonna. Be <laughs> it's not a tune to strange weapons. How about that? <laughs> oh, already seventeen survival. You're able to cut several of its organs out, but. It's, it's not like they're heart. any special. It's just like cutting out an ogre or something. Um, oh, onis aren't demons? No. Oh, no, they're not. No, they're not. I didn't know that. They do look like... I mean, the name... The name implies demon. It's, uh, it, it's really strange because, like... The they're very demon-ish. The, the they're not actually an oni. They're, they're an ogre mage. But D and D calls them an oni. Oh, that's funny. They're part. They're ogre kin. 
They're magical ogres. Right. Oh. So the word Oni is a misnomer. That's this. really weird. Yeah. Is it like a holdover from old editions or something? Yeah, because the Oni's been in since first edition. So. Oh. Yeah. When it was called the Ogre Mage. Yeah. I see. Um, and it kind of fits that that um, role. Like it has if you the same. To play in yeah, it has the same role that like an Oni does in like culture. I. But it is not a demon. The word Oni means like spirit of some kind. But it's in the D and D world, it's not a spirit. It, yeah, I. It, it's it's not. It doesn't really. It's a horrible name. Sorry, bitter. I mean, I guess I think ogre is best for it, but even that—that's like it's an ogre man. An assignment is not an actual translation. Yeah. If I was um, a DM, I would probably switch it to demon. But but then you'd have to make a whole new set of stats. And yeah, no, that's true. Right. So anyway, um, you get a bunch of organs. Um. Okay. Well, if it's not a demon, then these are just organs. You want to mix the door? No! I'm gonna glop him down to your feet. I don't want... No, well, I mean... Sacrifice him to your god. I want to see a sacrifice. No! <laughs> Why? Because it's not appropriate right now. I'm gonna poke it with a stick towards your feet. <laughs> Phlebotomus. No. Yeah. These are the or this organs. This is giant-sized. No. So, um, other than that, there's nothing special about it. If I pick these it up, organs it shrink down to my size. No, it's not magical. No. These organs are... The organs of a magical creature. You could process them into ingredients for things and okay. stuff. Okay, let's put them in the magical alchemy jug that'll keep them preserved. I think it's okay. fair. What would you guys like to do next? Would it fit in the bag of holding or no? The whole oni? No, the glaive. Yes. Oh, put it in the bag of holding. Put it in the bag of holding. Very Wait. slowly, Mary popping it into uh, the bag. Before you do, uh, Phlebotomus, can you check the glaive for magic? My detect magic thing is done. Well, I mean, like, look at it and admire the runes or whatever oh, it is well, you do. I, I picked it up and it didn't do anything magical. Um, yeah, sure, I'll check with Dr. Helena, I guess. Can I do that? Mm hmm Okay. Um, that is going to be... Um, 13. Nothing. Okay. It is just a glaive. Just a mundane one, not just, just a normal. Or like a gold Made of piece iron. or two. Just an iron glaive. Uh, might sell well to a collector. Someone who collects glaives. <laughs> Someone who collects uh, well, um, exotic weaponry. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm gonna search the room for any treasure. Okay. Roll a uh, perception. I'll assist you with that. That is gonna be a seven. Oh, assist. That is going to be a 12. You're able to find several beads, which are worth quite a lot of gold each, you believe, nice. because they're made out of jade. Nice. Um, some good jade loot in here. You're able to find an amulet and then some random lamps. Uh, who else would like to look? Um, well, I... Well, that's about it, actually. That's I, it. I you want the, to roll? I wear the yeah. amulet. Yeah. Was it perception? Yeah. Ten. Um, no, nothing. I can make a roll. Okay. You should probably be the one searching, considering you have wisdom and all of it. Uh, Twenty-three. You're able to find on the ground in one of the corners behind a uh, statue is a black file. Like a potion bottle? Yep. Oh. Made completely of black, but it is empty. Full bottomless. Oh. I have a uh, an empty black glass bottle. Oh, I know what this is. Okay, here we go. I'm going to roll to see if I know what this is. <laughs> um, it's Arcana. It's yep. going to be a 10. Actually, roll um, alchemy. Oh, yeah, sure. So add a proficiency to it. So that is going to be 16. Um, you know it deals with blood magic. This is a vial blood magic jar. Huh. Um, it's very evil, and I'm just going to be taking it off your hands now. 
What happens if, if we put the only blood in it? Let's find out. Yeah, let's do that. I'll float his body up again. Oh, no. Yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> let the... Let, hold it under, like, the Oni's slit throat. I'm gonna let the blood pool into there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you put blood in it. This is a, a PDF on my phone. I have to look at it. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Um, you see the blood that went into it, um, which was kind of black and dusty. Almost seems to re... What am I trying to say? Refill bottom eyes. Um, <laughs> it's like it's re-imbued with plasma and it becomes a lovely fluid again. Huh. But that's the most I can tell you right now. The PDF is loading. Here. No. Should I, I take a little sippy of this? You. Should I take a little sippy? Sure. I'm going to take a little sippy. If there's anybody that's qualified to drink blood, it is you. <laughs> It's in the name. It's a very good point. It's a very ah. good point. You've tasted this before. Oh no. It's shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, constitution saving throw. Oh boy. Oh. Add four. You get salmonella. Eight. Fourteen. You are able to spit it back out. You've tasted this a bajillion times before. This is a failed healing potion. If you think the blood was fresher, the blood may have turned into a healing potion. Mmm. Well, that's pretty f- fresh blood. Yeah. It has to be fresh by a minute. You oh. guys have been searching around. Oh, dang. That's fair. That's fair. Okay, I'm going to dump out the gross blood. Yeah. Want, want me to wash it out? Yeah, give it some good water in there. Just just pour a little water in there. Yeah, yeah you clean it up. Wait a minute. I'm gonna swish it around with my finger. You have your your decanter of not the endless water, the one that generates liquids, right? Oh, the alchemy jug. I make fresh blood. I don't no, it, think mm-hmm. that works. it can't do that. <laughs> Why not? It makes you, you it say makes it, makes it, nothing all happens. Kinds of liquids. It shakes at you, and nothing happens. <laughs> it's grossed out. We grossed it out. Oh, it's okay, little boy. You can, can, can you try a little harder? Yes. No. Fresh blood. No. Hey, Ixeldor. Yes. Come I'm not you. bleeding into the. <laughs> Hey, Kieran. I... Uh, cover your eyes. <laughs> you ought to be owe me one magical item. Maybe. Why don't you do it? We still have to have a sit-down about that. Oi, uh, you want to settle up now? Uh, gnome blood doesn't work for it. And that's my deception roll. <laughs> Seven. Yeah. Well, I suppose I'm, I, that makes sense. Sure. <laughs> right. Uh, twenty-three. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? You know, you get that little twitch in your eye when uh, when what? you're when I, you're I don't, making a little lie joke. I don't have eyes. Jokey lie. I've never heard of lying. I've never heard of it. You know, you see, see it right there on his I, eye. My eyes you get that little, little twitch. Oh, no, look, no. look in my direction. <laughs> <laughs> what? Huh? <laughs> You should have that looked at. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, I can still mostly see. You're a good doctor. With my other eye, I don't need this eye. Maybe you should cut it and bleed into the vial? What I'll the hold him fuck? down. <laughs> you get him. <laughs> I start running. Oh, he needs to make magic w- things for me. I'm running. I'm running away. <laughs> you have to roll an acrobatics don't. to get out of the grapple. You have to roll an athletics to get in the grapple. 19. Uh, guidance myself. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> slap your own butt. <laughs> Ten. You grab the little gnome as he's about to wiggle away. Mm-mm. And you've uh, got him grappled. I don't bleed me. No. I do need to make a sacrifice. No! <laughs> <laughs> he's if getting better at the jokes. If you're a good little, little gnome, <laughs> I won't sacrifice you to my gods. Okay. Okay. I'm a nice gnome. No more bleeding creatures. No more bleeding creatures. And no more asking me to be bled for you. No more asking me to be. No more asking you to be bled for me. Correct. Okay. Can I ask Kieran? No. How about this? No. <laughs> well. No. What? what no. Me? No. I mean, close. No. She's a. No. Sp- she won't mind. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Why don't you go 
find another door for us to exit through. So when we get back to go Arthur, find another door for us to exit through. Okay, I'm gonna go look for another door. Wait, let's no, 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 hold on, hold right on. We, we've got something left here that we need to check. Oh no, what? 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 The big kettle s- s- ca- 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 sedan. Sedan. Okay. Sadden. Didn't I'm we look at that? We looked at it, but not in it. What's in it? No, you looked in it. It was just a bunch of like places where you could hook up chains and handcuffs. Yeah, it was the kinky sedan. <laughs> um. Anyways, <laughs> I couldn't just roll my whole eyes. I had to roll my whole head. I'm gonna go ahead to the next door and I'm gonna check it for traps. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, that that amulet that you found. Oh yeah, I'm wearing the amulet. Does it do anything? It will. Yay, I'm not taking it off. <laughs> um, so as far as checking for traps goes, um, that's going to be a five. <laughs> Are you already yeah, wearing an amulet? I can wear two, can't I? I mean, one's not magical. That's I mean, one, true. I, one is, but doesn't require attunement. Oh, yeah, the one you're wearing requires attunement. It's not going to do anything to you. Oh, okay. Yeah, and the Lord of Snails amulet is not magical. What about your clockwork amulet? Fuck. <laughs> yeah, shit, okay. That's in Xanathar's, right? Yes, it is. Does it require attunement? I have no goddamn clue. We'll it's right there. Later. Anyway, so there's no traps in the door. Yeah, so the door is good. I'm gonna go ahead and open it. There's a long dugout hallway for you guys to weave your way through. Guys, I found something you'll never believe. Was it a dugout hallway? How did you know? I d- wild guess. <laughs> All right, so you guys go down a long, winding hallway all over again, and I would like you to roll Constitution for the poison. Oh, that's poison. Twenty-three. 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 Eighteen. Okay, you guys will take half damage, which at this point is going to be one point of poison damage to each of you. You guys go down another tunnel, and eventually you actually get to a little tiny stone alcove that um, that someone must have found as they were digging around. So you guys are coming from the bottom, you would n- continue to go up, but to the right there's a little alcove. At the end of this corridor is a small alcove holding a three foot tall stone pedestal on which rests a small silver coffer. Fifteen feet in front of the alcove, there is a single small step in the stone floor. And inside the alcove, the floor is elevated an additional two feet. Oh, that, that's the trap. I'm going to check the step for traps. Sure. Let's, let's no check perception. everything for traps. I'll, I'll assist you. Thank you. Oh. Does not require Eight. You Absolutely. see an obvious silver line that is a hinge that runs across the full width of the floor. The hinge can be dismantled by someone who uses tinkers or thieves tools. But it will take five minutes to do so. That describes me. Roll your check. Your tool check. Tool check. Tool check. Natural 20. You are able to dismantle the hinge in a way that will prevent the slab from moving. Yay. All right. And it's silver, right? The silver coffer up ahead. Oh, okay. Um, I'm gonna go ahead. Am I tall enough to reach the coffer? Um, keep, keep checking for traps. This, <laughs> you this, can't quite reach it. This yeah. is very suspicious. I'm gonna check the pedestal for traps. And are you giving me guidance? I'm assisting you guys. Yes, I'm not guidance. Um, okay, so that's a 10. 12. That is gonna be a 12. No traps. No traps. Uh, I can't reach it, because one of you gents, maybe... Let's let's move back. I've got something I can do here. Okay. Oh, use your bees. Use your bees. That's right. That's right. All right. <clears throat> we get far enough away that I'll send my bees over to pick up the silver coffer. The coffer, it's a, a big coffer that you can open. Like a big chest. Oh. I will have the bees open the chest. Okay. The chest is opened. You can't see inside of it from here. You'll have to go up and step up and look inside of it. I have, I have a bad feeling about this. Can I reach it now that it's open? It's more like... Oh, I see. You have to look in it. Okay. 
I'll move up and take a look in it. You step forward. I would like you to roll a religion check. Um, as I remind myself what the thing is. Oh, I spelled it wrong. 23. Okay. Um, give me two seconds. Okay. You get closer to the coffer and you very carefully look in and you see that the inside is all silvery. There's one single item inside the coffer. What looks to be a figure of, of, I would make you roll, I know you've rolled a high religion, but can you roll high nature for me to determine what this animal is? Uh, guidance. Nature? Yeah. 25. Okay. You've been on a lot of travels. You've seen this. This is a rare chameleon. It's a statue of a chameleon, but it's not sitting nicely like a chameleon. It's all and its arms all over and its tongue is and its tail is and it's got big oh giant gosh. bulging eyes and it just looks freaking crazy. And as you as you look in, it's not that its eyes turn to look at you, it's like the whole statue turns to look at you like a like like in a video game when a model isn't animated <laughs> but it's still moving. And the whole thing looks at you and gets up. Oh, it's and it's floating in the air in front of you. This it's little one foot by one foot weird statue of a chameleon. I love this thing. Oh, oh religion. There is a. Uh, you already rolled a high religion, did you? Yeah. 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 Um, there is a god known as the chameleon. It is the trickster god. Ooh. Erevan Elysir. I am going to use animal handling. Okay. <laughs> whoa, man. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> What is this thing? No, it, it settles the beast. It's not an elephant. I got a 19. <laughs> You're doing this, and it, and it goes around Ixeldor, goes down the hallway, takes a right, and disappears down the tunnel. <laughs> oh, and run after it's it. It's moving at like 100 feet around. Oh my god. It's very fast. I'm following it as best I can. Let's, let's go, boys! You guys run down the path, and you do lose sight of it. Wow. Oh. What the hell was that? I love it. I'm, I'm just going to keep going. Religion check. Um, I can just tell you this because you already got a high one. Uh, worshippers of Arab and Elysir never worship in the same place twice. So oh. this is probably some random fucking thing that they made in worship of their god. <laughs> oh my god. They do hide and seek to worship their god. That's amazing. Where do I sign up? I don't know. <laughs> You can never sign up in the same place twice. Oh my god. Okay, I'll have to find a place to sign up then. Well, I mean, like, two steps away is a different place, right? The next room over is a different place, right? Possibly. Well, this whole dungeon Let's is just keep one, going. This whole dungeon is one place. Uh, I, it, don't, if, I don't know where to go now. If, um, it found an exit. We just keep going. Well, Faerun is one place. Can we ponder this a different time? Do maybe? I have to go to Chult? Maybe. You guys run all the way down, and you end up back in the hallway with the big animal statues and the eagle mouth that traps the bottom of us. Oh, oh, God. I am going to use survival to try and see where in the air the dust was disturbed the most. <laughs> okay, go if it's going that fast, it's kicking up a lot of dust. Guidance. Guidance. <laughs> Guidance. Guidance. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> um that that's Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, thirteen. Nothing. Shit. It has uh three different directions it could have gone in. Alright, okay, let's split up directions. That's <laughs> not a good idea. <laughs> not a good idea. <laughs> are any of these directions ways we haven't gone yet? Yes. To the left. Let's go. Which way are we? Where are we standing right now? Uh, to the bottom. Okay, let's go to the left. Okay. Agreed. Oh, so this is where we come out. Okay. Right, let's now go it is time to end the episode. Shit. So you guys fought the Oni, and you found a shrine to the Trickster God. So more leftover Elven stuff. But it's time to end the episode. We will talk to you guys next time on Downstairs and Dragons, as we're hopefully gonna finish this dungeon soon. Soon. I mean, it's cool, but yeah, soon.
Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time.